Hey everybody, good morning. Good morning, it is day 68. Day 68 for spiritual health care. Welcome everyone. Um, this is, we are back to rain and cloud here in Edmonton. Uh, more rain. Oh well, what can you do? Um, welcome to everybody. Um, jo come and, and you know sit down, grab your breakfast, grab your coffee, come and join us. Um, it is always so good to see everybody coming in in the morning. Uh, good morning, Patricia, and good morning, Kaz. Um, it was, I don't know where you guys uh, you know sit right now, but there's been like weird stuff going on with the phone lines this morning today. It was like it's crazy. I've had to make a couple of phone calls, and like <laughs> everything just keeps getting dropped. I don't know. It's crazy. I think the system is kind of overwhelmed right now. It's pretty nuts. Uh, good morning, Sally. How are you? Good morning, Des. Um, good morning to everybody. It is is so awesome to see see all of you. Um, I got an amazing, amazing present from um, Shadow and Brandy, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, it just it it's so awesome. It's so I can't. Yeah, it's it's the, it's one of the coolest things I ever. Here, I'm just gonna show it to you guys right now because it's awesome. Good morning, Marge. Good, how are you guys? So check this out. So so Brandy and Shadow here from Spiritual Healthcare made me the coolest candle. This is the coolest that I have to show you guys this thing. It's so it's so neat. It's so neat. And I started burning it last night. And it's got like I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got like like crystals in it and glitter and everything. And then it has it, it's an entity seeker candle. And so it's got all of my shows and uh and events and stuff like that all along the candle and yeah so brand new they made this this is this the coolest thing i'm just i love it and it smells like absolutely incredible it's just good morning good morning brandy good morning shout out i'm showing everybody your candle right now that you made me because it's like it is like the most amazing thing and it's so it smells so good it smells so i had it on last night it smells like blueberry pancakes you guys it smells like blueberry pancakes it's like it is the coolest thing it is so it is so awesome and it smells so good um, yeah, so anyway, it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this. I just love it. They hand make these, you guys. Yeah, they have this little company called Calico Creations, and like they, they make these, and this is like, it's just awesome. I just love it so much. So it was on last night, anyway. <laughs> it, was, it was on last night, and it like made my whole room smell so good. And I, it's funny, because uh, uh, Galen was, was up a little bit this morning and, and whatnot, and I, I think he could smell it, too, because he loves the smell of anything, like baking or cooking or anything like that as well he really likes that so i had that on last night it was it's just it's i love it i love it so i love it so much thank you guys um yeah so today i'm i'm stoked to uh to get this this party rolling because um uh day 68 uh is the law of compensation it's the law of compensation so that's actually this this is like this is so fitting actually for this day this is great um, and Brandy is saying, thank you for everything you were doing. Thank you guys for coming every day because seriously, like this is a, um, this is, is such a, a gift and, uh, a, 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 it's so, it's so special for me to be able to have the opportunity, um, to, to be with you guys, to be able to do this stuff every day. Um, and, uh, and, and to move through this with you, it is, it is my pleasure and honor to be able to, to do this all the time. And I'm just so grateful that, uh, that, you know, everybody has, has really come together for this. So, um, no, this is, I, I, I love this and, uh, and just doing this with you guys every day is, is amazing. So, um, Will saying post a link. Yeah, I, I absolutely. So yeah, Brandy and Shadow, if you guys have a website, like the Calico Creations website, post a link, post a link on the, on the thread here. Um, and whatever, because these are just the, it is, it's like, check that out. This is the coolest thing. It's all, it's all blurry because the camera's out of focus. I'm trying to, there we go. I'm trying to focus the camera again. But it's the neatest thing. It's got like my book and my shows. So it's ri there was Ritual, which I did. Fireside Ghost Experience, which I did. Uh, the Art of Ghost Hunting, which is still, that one is, that one hopefully, 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 hopefully will be um, eventually in Vancouver, in Gastown. I'm excited about that. that we've, we've got a whole pile of, um, uh, we've got a, I got a whole pile of shows that I want to disperse. <laughs> but can't do it when, can't really do it very well when I'm, I'm you know, we're all, we're all stuck at home. But once, once things get healthy again, once we, we, we see that health coming coming through we'll, we'll make that we're going to make all that happen so and so much of it now is going to be live streamed so everybody can can attend and um to be able to do this so that's that's really great march says she has paranormal 911 on right now that's awesome that's awesome um yeah that's that i that will be so great to get backing and 
get back into to, to filming that for you guys. That's going to be really good. Um, and whatever. It's hello to if anybody's uh, watching from my production team. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone's at home. Everybody's at home. You know, even the, even the, you know, TV show people, we're, <laughs> we're all, we're all at home. Nobody's filming anything new. We're going to have a lot of reruns this, this, this year, I think. Lots of reruns, but that's okay. It gives us time to catch up. That's, that's all good. That's all good. Um, yeah, it's all good. But yeah, as soon as Brandy, Brandy, once you guys, once you guys get your, your link up and whatever, and we'll, we'll share it around, share it because yeah, the, the, these candles, I can't even, I wish you guys could smell this, like. I wish you guys could smell this through the uh, mm, through the camera. You kind of want to eat it. You really do. <laughs> it's like it's it's really good. It's really amazing. So thank you guys so much for for all of that. So today I want to talk about the law of compensation because um, it is I think one of those really important rules when we're understanding not only things like um, everyday things like uh, like money and um, uh, you know what we're getting back in our experience. Um, but also when we're talking about things like, uh, the paranormal, when we're talking about, um, understanding what we're putting into the world, um, is really begins to be the equivalent of what we're, of what we're bringing back. And, um, and it's not on a moral level, unfortunately, because <laughs> there's a lot of people that are like completely morally screwed right up and, and, uh, you know, and they get back on these different levels, you know, what they're, what they're putting out. So, um, so we're going to talk about that today and how it works and how it applies to hauntings as well as how it applies just to life in general. Um, because it's, it's really, it's very interesting to see what, what we, uh, what we put into our world and how it comes back to us in these different cultures. Um, and different and different areas. Um, there's mo most religions and cultures have some sort of equivalent to this um, and the idea of of compensation, but um, it really is the law of rhythm. Uh, it is that everything, every single thing, has got a rhythm. Every single thing is something that we bring. Um, we keep, uh, you know, once once we put it out there, we get it back at a tempo. Um, and the amount that we put in and the amount that we, we pull out is, is really based on a, a few different things and a few key things. So I'm going to go through that today, um, so that you guys can kind of see what the correlation is. And it's it, cause it is very interesting. Everything that we get back is in exact ratio to the energy that we're putting into something. It's really interesting. And this is like, you know, when we see, we see this in, in cause and effect, we see this in the momentum of even, even just physics and stuff like this, but we very rarely re start to associate it with what we're, what we're actually doing. Um, and so many people get hung up on the idea that, that it's gotta be hard, that there's gotta be hard work in order to, you know, to, to get something back. And, and the argument that I often hear made about the law of compensation, which is interesting, um, is that, you know, well, I work so, so, so hard. So why am I not getting back the results that, you know, that, that equals that hardship and that there's, there's a lot of flaws to that. And I'll explain it in just a second. Um, so the three points to the law of compensation when we're talking about this is, are, are, are really key. The first one is the need for what you do. The first is always the need for what you do. People would rather be, for example, let's look at things like, like entertainers, right? Entertainers make a crap load of money, like a crap load of money. And most people think that if you are, you know, in entertainment and whatnot, well, that doesn't make sense because road worker, for example, should get more out of, um, you know, they, they work harder. They should be getting paid more than somebody who's like, who's entertaining people and things like that. But here's the thing is that it's not really about that. It's not about the fact that their job is less valuable or more valuable or anything. It has nothing to do with any of that. Um, but the majority of people want to be entertained. The majority of people want to be entertained. Like, like loads of people are willing to put their focus on entertainment. They would, most people would rather be entertained than to think, to be quite honest with you. Um, and we're watching that in the media lately. Um, but there is so much focus and so much, um, uh, so much energy that is, it, that is put into people wanting to be entertained. And they, the, the, the compensation is, is reflected by that. Um, you know, not to say that that person that's doing that dangerous construction job, uh, shouldn't be getting that kind of money. It's, it has nothing to do with that, but we have to start understanding that that need for what 
what you do, the more focus that's plugged into it, um, ends up being reflected back into, into the, the, the monetary compensation as well. So when we look at this in terms of, uh, of, of the paranormal, um, the need for the hole in whatever there's, there's usually a hole in our experience somewhere. When we get our, when we, we start to look at paranormal events, um, what we usually find is that somewhere in there, especially when it comes to, to, uh, you know, different types of, uh, uh, spirit hauntings and things like that, intelligent hauntings. What I've noticed is that often it will fill a hole or fill a space, fill a need, um, as, uh, you know, as the phenomenon is, is, is taking shape. I had a, a really interesting case, uh, a number of years ago, and the girl that was that was the main focus she was about 12 years old and her mom and dad were gone frequently like they traveled all the time they were, were working all the time and so they were gone a lot and she was was left she was kind of a latchkey kid um she had a lot of babysitters and, and things like that but her parents were not really like plugged into that level and what was interesting was that there was a spirit who basically she explained um showed up and it seemed to be female and she said it tucked her in at night um you know if she wasn't doing her homework when she got home from school stuff would start moving around stuff would start you know getting you know getting thrown she was told um until she would sit down and start doing her homework um but she ended up with this really unique and interesting relationship with this with this 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 spirit um who really did fill this gap there was this gap in her world and filled this gap and she loved it she she absolutely loved it she had this great relationship with this with this entity and um you know and she wanted to know in 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 her world you know is is this good is this bad and whatever and it and you know it filled a, a really really wonderful wonderful need it was too bad that her her parents weren't plugging in in that in that way because they, they should have been um but it was it was a very interesting experience so the 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 compensation that comes back um with with the universe how this this manifests and how this creates it will it will fill the hole um on the negative end of things though this is where we have to be really careful because when we talk about the law of compensation um we have to understand that, that need and that hole can end up getting filled um you know on a on a level that we don't want as well so we're hanging out in sort of that that negative end of the emotional spectrum um that hole tends to get filled with something that's that's not so good um you know and we can look at this in terms of even things like parenting right like what if you've got a kid who maybe you know is missing his father he's a he's a fatherless son or daddyless daughter or any of these you know anything like that and that ends up you know in with the wrong crowd in with a crowd that treats him like family but maybe isn't so good for him um or you know it's, it's something something along those lines it opens you up to 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 predators right so um you know when we when we look at that there will be some sort of an equivalent energy that will move in so we're not talking about necessarily the equivalence of what you've done and we're not talking about the equivalence of action necessarily we're talking about the equivalence of energy of energy we get what we bring into our experience so it's it's something to be really really conscious of the second part of this is our ability to do the thing so this is the, this is where the action part comes in so we have great need we have great need and then we have the ability to do it so this ability might not come with a college degree it, we're not talking necessarily about um something that is is you know taught to us through through business or through school um we're talking about things like experience about things like you know what have we done to clean up the crap in our in in our world in our in our experience um, to make up our mind that we're going to get really really good at not only mastering where we are but mastering what we do with it mastering what we do with it so when we have the great need we have the ability the third one which I think is is important to understand is our ability to be very difficult to replace. And this has a little bit more to do with with action but the more you are the more difficult you are to replace in your world then your value your stock goes up right um and you know it, on a business level we look at this and we think okay well and especially we, when we're talking about things like um uh you know entertainment and tv shows i know you guys are watching paranormal 911 um you know and if you in the, in the tv industry let me tell you this is such a good example of this in the tv industry everybody is super expendable like 
it is, is, is really nuts. Like we, you get super expendable really quick. There's always somebody that is going to fill, fill that gap. You get fired. No problem. They're going to, they're going to figure it out. Right. Or if you're not telling them what they want to hear, no problem. They'll figure it out. They'll move somebody into place. Um, and, and they will, they will replace you. So the whole key in, in our world and to be moving through this experience with, with a level of success, especially after the pandemic, how we're going to be broaching into this, this new environment. We've got new markets. We've got a new audience. We've got new, like everything is going to be different. The psychology is different. How people are thinking, what their priorities are. Everything is going to be different. So one of the key things to success and well, that I've noticed like universally has been make yourself essential make yourself essential. It's, it's really, really important. Um, so you got to figure out how you're unique. How are you moving through the world in this unique way? We have, we really have to start to understand and look at that. Um, it's not going to be enough anymore to just come in and, and, you know, hope for the, the bottom rung. It just, it, it, it doesn't work out. So when we're dealing with things like, um, uh, paranormal activity and research and all of that, we have to be able to look at this and understand that our needs, our ability to execute what we're doing, all of that, and then turning around and being and finding our uniqueness. Not only is it the solution in moving through uh, difficulties in our experience, whether we're dealing with um, you know people in our experience or negative hauntings or whatever it is, um, but it's also it's it's going to expand, I think, into more uh, than than just the 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 sort of the bare bones basics of, of what we've been, uh, you know, what we've been exposed to prior, uh, prior pandemic. Um, so when we begin to realize and start to shape that identity, and we've been doing that a lot on, uh, on spiritual healthcare here, which has been so important. Um, but I think when we, we begin to start to look at the phenomenon that we're encountering, um, when we, we, you know, we, a little while ago, we talked about, um, in class, the, the Spanish research that's going on right now about hauntings increasing and uh, poltergeist activity and things like that going up. Uh, and of course, people are, you know, they're, they're under stress. People are under stress. And when they're under stress, that's when we end up getting typically, of course, not only more accounts of negative hauntings, um, but we turn around and we get um, more, um, uh, you know, we get more uh, focused on to maybe that negative end of the emotional spectrum and we have to and we have we have to be really conscious of of what it is that we're putting into that how are we going to be difficult to replace what do we do um and darren's saying that no one is 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 irreplaceable yeah and you know life wise life wise that's absolutely true everybody is you know people people really are um you know, people as individuals, and this is, I think, where, where some people get, get get screwed up a little bit with this, because immediately, I think a lot of instinct, uh, you know, is to say, well, you know, everybody, everybody has a gift, everybody's got the ability to, um, you know, is, of course, unique and important, and, and all of that, and absolutely, 100% is, is completely true, especially, you know, on, on the core level of our being, every single person has this you know, has this uniqueness and we're here for a reason. We're here on purpose. And, you know, unfortunately when we get into, you know, when we get into industries and we get into things like that, then, you know, that just, people are, people are looking for the bottom line and we have to really begin to understand what it is that our purpose is bringing to the table. What are we, what is our purpose? Some people are back going, you know, I don't even know what that is. I've had so many clients over the years that have really struggled with the question, which seems so simple. What do I want? What do I want? One of the first things I ask my clients when I sit down with them is why am I here? Why am I here? And immediately they always say the same thing. It's just, well, I've got this haunting and it's like, I don't know what to do with it. And you know, it's scaring my kids and it's scaring, you know, I can't function like this. And the next point from, from that move, movement forward, once they answer that question is, okay, what does it look like if this was not in your environment? What does it look like? What does, if you could wave a magic wand right now, what would your life look like? What's your purpose? What do you, what's your vision look like? And that question is something that most people get hung up on. Most people, they have no idea. They have no idea. They, they've, they, they usually come back with something like, I want to be happy. Okay, well, happy is not a plan. 
and happy is not a day of the week. So what would it look like? What would this look like for you? So the more we can understand our purpose, the more we can understand what this, you know, what this looks like, the more we can begin to back up um, and take a look at the three points. Okay, that's great. What is, what is the need, number one, that this is filling for you? And when you can understand what the need, that whether it be the haunting or whatever it is, whatever is going on in your life, what is the need that is, is being fulfilled? It gives you insight. It gives you insight into, into you, into you. If it gives you insight into what, into what we're, what you're missing. Um, and as I say, if people would rather be enlightened or entertained than think they really would. Um, so we have to start asking ourselves, what is the need that this is, that this is starting to fulfill? Um, you know, and then again, the second one, our ability to do it. What's our ability to do it? Um, what are you, what are you bringing to the table that is so efficient that this is going to start rolling you forward. And so many times this becomes a very interesting part of the solution to the haunting as well. It's really interesting. I had a client recently, it was just this year, um, and she is a, a, a social worker, works with uh, the native uh, indigenous, uh, the First Nations people here, here in Alberta. And her big thing was really caring for these young women who were just, they were just, their life was off in the ditch. And what was interesting was that her, that the, some of the negative momentum that she had going was some of what was, was causing the chaos in the home. It was causing, it was, it was causing the haunting to just go through the roof. Um, however, her, what her, her ability was, she had this incredible intuitive ability to step into people's worlds and begin to change their environment, change their energy, begin to to help them shape their life into a new way, because that's what she did as a social worker. Um, you know, a lot of these were young mothers that they, you know, they didn't have, they didn't have a partner, you know, they were broke. Um, some of them were struggling with drugs, all of these things and her ability to guide them and make them, a, you know, let them see a goalpost and move them towards that goal. She was brilliant at it, like just brilliant. So her ability to do it, she found that she found the need, she found what was going on. Her, she found the ability her, her, her ability, her gift. And she was very difficult to replace. She was extremely difficult to replace because that takes not only tenacity, it takes insight, it takes compassion and warmth and all of these, you know, all of these various qualities. And sure, her stock was pretty high, but what she wasn't doing, she wasn't applying it to the other areas in her experience. Um, so the law of compensation is always going to give you back. It's a rhythm. It's always going to give you back exactly what you're putting in energetically. And when we start to use these three points, you can start to kind of see where, where those holes are. So it's really interesting to, to watch it, to, to watch it form. As I say, it's a little bit more of a difficult one, but, um, it is extremely exact. It is extremely exact and it doesn't always seem fair because it doesn't always seem like we're getting the compensation back that we actually want or deserve. But the law of compensation doesn't pay attention to uh, how we feel about it. <laughs> it doesn't care. It doesn't care. It's all about those three points. So, um, so going forward into today, the process that I want to offer you guys um, is to take a look at those three points um, and figure out where those fit in your experience in different areas. Um, so the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and... How are you difficult to replace? Because those three things, not only are they, do they reshape our experience with the world and our experience with, with paranormal stuff, but they also, it also turns around and begins to, to make us look hard at how we're going to be moving back into this really crazy new world um, as stuff starts to reopen. Um, in Alberta here, our uh, state of emergency is getting lifted on June 15th. I don't know if that's such a good thing, uh, but you know, we're going to see what happens. But so stuff is, stuff is moving stuff is moving whether we want it to or not we get to decide whether you know where where we fit in and the more we know ourselves the more we know who we are man the easier that that's going to be the easier that that's going to be if you can define what it is that makes you unique it's huge it's as so huge um and as i say it, it often that purpose understanding that purpose begins to show you the solutions to problems and it doesn't matter whether it's a haunting or whether it's a you know getting a new job because a lot of people are jobless right now um 
you know, whatever it is for you. Um, but those, those three points, it's, it's a big deal. So I wanted to read a little bit from, ah, I wonder faith of the Valley, Ayanla, Miss Ayanla Van Zandt. So brilliant. She's so brilliant. Um, she has been doing an amazing live stream as well, by the way, she is like, she is like kicking ass right now. And, uh, I am just, I, I love watching her. Like she's, she's brilliant. Just it's, it's amazing. So I wanted to read you guys a little bit from this because I think this is a great example and a great um, uh, illustration as to how to get this process going because a lot of people really start looking at this. It's a big deal and people start looking at it in a lot of fear. So I want to like, I want to offer you guys this from this book because I think this will help. The quickest way to turn a bad situation into a blessing is to get excited. Things may not look, look so good right now. You may even doubt your ability to hold up under pressure or the scrutiny, and it's all okay. You can still choose to be excited. Excitement is the opposite of anxiety. It brings a new energy into any situation. Excitement gives you power and puts you in charge of what you do. Just imagine how you feel when the situation is over. Think about what you will do with the knowledge and experience that you are gaining. Think about the stories you can tell, the people you can assist, the fact that you will know what to do if you are ever in the situation again. Is that exciting? In any situation, you have the right, power, and ability to choose your experience. Old habits and negative thought patterns will be the first to show up, but we can choose a new way in which you will affect the outcome. Rather than, being, than slipping into fear, resentment, or anger, you can get excited. Be excited that this has come to an end. Be excited that you are equipped to handle it. Be excited that life is trusting you to do the right thing. And be excited that you will do your best no matter what happens. It, this, this is so, I think, so so key and so important. Um, and I'm going to add a video today to our the Entity Seeker uh, Facebook page from the brilliant Bob Proctor, um, who I am just as I say, so grateful to be an affiliate with Proctor Gallagher Institute. Um, and uh, I'm going to post that, and it's it is the the construction of of fear and how it how it works, how our brains start to form it and internalize it, and how then it manifests into things like disease and depression and all of those things. So I'm going to throw that on the page for you guys today. It's a really really good video, um, and uh, and you guys can check that out as well. So, but it is this is about moving through fear. It's about realizing that once we we can understand the law of compensation, that what the energy that we're projecting, we're going to get in return. Um, this, it moves you through your experience in a new way. Um, so it's yeah, super important, <sighs> but that being said, we have to get into health affirmations before we go. So everybody take a breath. It is natural for my body to be well. Even if I don't know what to do in order to get better, my body does. I have trillions of cells with individual consciousness and they know how to achieve their individual balance. When this condition began, I didn't know what I know now. I don't need to understand the cause of this illness. I only have to gently eventually release this illness. It doesn't matter how it got started because it's reversing its course right now. And there's no hurry about any of this. My body knows what to do. Well-being is natural to me. My inner being is intricately aware of my physical body. My cells are asking for what they need in order to thrive and source is answering those requests. I'm in very good hands. My only work is to relax and breathe. And I can do that easily. And everybody take a breath. Marge is saying I have, she had a drive-by baby shower for her daughter on Sunday and they set it up like a flower stand. It looks beautiful. I love that. I love that. Everybody that is finding a way to celebrate right now, I think is so perfect. It's so brilliant. And I think I, I'm good for you guys. Good for you guys. Find a way to celebrate and you don't have to wait for a baby shower either. You don't have to wait for a baby shower. Find a reason. Find a reason to do your, your you know, drive-bys. Go surprise somebody. It's like, I never ever thought we'd be living in a world where you could say, I'm going to go surprise somebody by a drive, but with a drive-by, ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, that's just insane. Um, 
That's just crazy. But now drive-bys have a new, they have a new meaning, I guess. I don't know. I guess drive-bys were always a surprise, but like now they're a different kind of surprise. <laughs> what do you, what do you do? Yeah. Laura's, Laura's saying, thank you so much for reminding me to breathe every morning. Oh, I know it's, you know, it's one of those things where I think, I think we do, we, we forget, we, we do forget that, you know, breath comes so natural to us and we don't really notice um, you know, when we're struggling with it or, you know, when we're not breathing because it's just so normal, right? It's so normal. Um, but breath really is, it's a function of that energy that's moving through us. And, um, when we're breathing and when we're, we're, we're flowing into that experience, man, like it's, uh, and, and breath of course has become so crucial as well because of, you know, with, with COVID, what I find very interesting about COVID, and this is kind of just a side note, um, is that, I find that the fact that, you know, the world in and of itself was having trouble with that ebb and flow, they were really having trouble with that ebb and flow. And what I find really interesting is that COVID is very reflective of that. Um, and it's, it's, you know, stopping breathing and affecting the lungs and, and, and whatnot. And I, I don't think that's an accident. I think, uh, I think there's a, there's a, there's a vibrational correlation there. Um, you know, when we're not letting this stuff flow, uh, and we're not letting that energy flow. It gets it gets chalked up and backed up, and and it starts to reflect in illness, right? It starts to reflect in our experience in various diseases and illnesses and stuff like that. And I, th I think I think it's really uh, I think it's important to take note of what the equivalence equivalencies are of uh, of some of what's going on right now. It's very interesting. So I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Cass says thank you thank you for the mornings. Thank you guys for the mornings. They would not be happening without you guys. So if there is anything you want to talk about, text me, message me, all of that. If you want to cover something that we have not covered, um, on spiritual health care, um, and, uh, and we will, we will go through it and address it because it's important. Laura's saying she tends to breathe to survive, not thrive. It's better to use it for both. I couldn't have said it better myself. I couldn't have said it better. I, I think that's, it's dead on dead on. So anyway, guys, I will see you tomorrow morning. Spiritual health care, 10 a.m. Mountain time. Don't forget to share the playlist on YouTube, youtube.com slash entity seeker. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.